What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. This is episode 4 of the Rank Up series, and in this video I'll be going over a Champ 2 replay and what they are doing wrong and what they can improve on. Without any further delay, let's get right into the video. What's up everyone, welcome to part 2, uh, or not part 2, part 4 of the replay review series, the Rank Up series, whatever we want to call it. And... I don't know if I explained it in the intro, but the main reason we're skipping Champ 1 is I think Champ 2 and Champ 1 are pretty much the same rank. There's very little difference that I've noticed, so that's why we're skipping on into Champ 2. And this will be a two-parter. We're going to go over Champ 2 and Champ 3. And Champ 3, if you're interested in sharing your replay, join the Discord. Link's in the description. Send over the, the replay file, and it will be in the video. Uh, if you're not interested in that, just stay tuned for Champ 3, and I'll be going over how to get out of C2, C3, and into GC, pretty much. But, first off here, we have something that the past ranks didn't do. They cheated up, right? You don't have to do this every kickoff, but I highly, 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 highly suggest it. That is the one thing that if you watch a bunch of pro replays, bunch of higher ranked replays, that is what they do. Good. Not the best touch here. So what we could could do better here, right? This he's trying to get involved in play, and this is also something that the past two Diamond and uh, Plat have not done. They are involved in the game. This is putting themselves in one a weird spot on defense but also they're trying to get involved in the play again and that's fine this is where he goes wrong or the player goes wrong they turn off their camera or their ball cam and they go to car cam which is the bad part right boost isn't there they get a bad touch they get their boost stolen again right A way to make this a better touch, right, is instead of using the 24 to go back, because 12, 24. Right here, you could be on 24 and be in a lot better position. You could also be lower down on the wall. We've seen where the shot's coming from, right? We see, oh, we can drive down a little bit here and get a solid touch and be more on the ground here instead of just bouncing around. Maybe it leads to a demo, but at least it's a safer touch, right? We're using a lot of boost here, and this is where boost management starts to be a heavy, heavy thing to focus on. Because, let's say, we don't use, and also boost pathing and boost knowledge. Like, right here, the first two, that's good. If we continue along this path here, of, uh, where are we? We're right here. So if we continue along this path, 12, 24. If we come across here, that's 36. We go back here, 48, 60, boom. Or we can do what we did here, just these two pads, and then across this way into the next play. Because that is also what uh, the player does, right? Is he points his car towards where the ball is going towards next. He realizes he can't get there, so he goes to the next play. Then he can boost off for a second. That is fine. That is good. This is fine. Trying to get involved in the play again. Getting ready. This turn here is not bad. I would have done a little bit of a different play here. I would have went more to the side, right? Because the ball is not probably, and also you're just, this is a bad angle for your car. And if you're not good of where you are on the field, this is also bad. But what I would have done here is I would have gone here, balls over my head, where are we? Boom. I would have gone pad, pad, and pad again. Like, I would be going over here. And the main thing for that is so I can get a better sense of the field. And I get a better sense of the field going further back, right? I can see where my opponent is. I can check using my right stick just to look where the opponent is, maybe. And I have a lot more time here than I realize. And I don't panic, or not panic, but I don't just give them possession. That is another thing. If we do my thing here, boom, 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 in the corner, 
while I have time and the ball bounces for me, all I have to do is meet it right around here. And it's a little bit of a better possession, maybe a better touch. I don't know, many things. I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a stuffy nose, so if you hear me breathing heavier, that's because of it. We see our teammate here, right? We need to either chow right away, not right away, but create this pressure. He's recovering net, so they're by, they're four. We have 60 boost. We're using uh, 17 boost to drive forward and then a little bit more to go there. So we've seen our teammate in the net, same position for the past, I don't know, two camera flicks. And now we decide to go, right? That is bad timing. We need to go here. We need to turn here because let's say I turn here and I just follow them. Guess where I meet the ball? I meet it on the bounce and this guy's no boost. So what does he have to do? He has to flick it over or he has to 50. And if not, and the ball goes up or it goes this direction, we can turn and grab boost and turn back this way at the worst case scenario. Best case scenario, it's a low 50 that rolls this way and we can follow it based off the uh, our flip, if we flip or if we don't flip. But we wait a little too long here. We're waiting here a lot. Is This is not a you have to rush the play, but as long as you give your opponents less and less time, the less things that they can do with the ball. And I'm not saying to ball chase. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying to apply pressure to the point where it's hard for your opponents to do something. Not just we're on the ball, I'm touching the ball because I can touch the ball. You always want to have meaning when you touch the ball. And if you can keep it close, that's probably the best. Like a way to be on the ball more than one time. Kind of like the the idea of a uh, air dribble. You just want to stick on the ball. But you know, on the ground or in the air, either or. This isn't a bad idea per se, but it's better to either go for the shot or, you know, take your time, take it to the corner, take their boost, right? Two different, two different abilities there. This is the watching as I said, it's a. Uh, it happens at every rank. No one, no one's excluded. We're not involved in the play here, so we're kind of just watching to see what happens. But we're not paying attention to where we're at on the field. So then we have to correct it, right? So just a better way is just to give more space. Like I don't know how to describe it. It's just pretty much just playing wide. You can hook around here. Because if you sit back post here, and the ball comes to you, you can just drive forward. Not even here. Like here, pretty much a way to defend the back post. And a shot if it comes in. But not so you're like back here. But something around here. This little area, this little... I don't know, this like yellow node or something. That's where I would suggest to be. Then it goes up. We shouldn't be in the middle here like that, right? It works, right? It works because no one's covering the pass. If we're higher up and no one's challenging the ball, right? There's the other half of it. No one's challenging the ball because we're giving our opponents too much time. And this goes for the blue team as well. If I go over here to this guy who went for the play here in the corner... He backs off here. That's all right. His teammate should not be on this right boost here. It's so important, but the camera flicks. Knowing when to turn off your ball cam and turn on your ball cam is probably the most important thing. Because having ball cam on indicates how much information you can get from the play. If you're on car cam, you don't know what's going on in the game. Unless your car is pointed towards the play. Or the rest of the field. So even for like split seconds. Like he can clearly see that the play is moving to the left. And we still turn it off and grab the boost. Because we're so... We deem the boost more valuable than the play here. And he could get the same amount of boost. If he paid attention to the boost path, right? 
Use 12 to get here, boom, 12, 24, and then you're following the play, 36, 48, on top of what they already have at like 30 something. So you're at 60 something. And then you're at uh, probably 80 something based off the, the second number, the numerical value. And then not only that, you can cut off the play, right? They only have time to go for the ball because we allow them, right? Which allows no one to challenge this ball, which allows a rush play to the back hole, which Cliff here just does not understand how to defend and wasn't in position for it because yet again, we deemed the mid boost that our teammate needs to rotate back and probably challenge for you, but we take the ball instead and it spills out to the middle. Great positioning. I said originally that it's bad positioning because of key factors like challenging the, the first man on the blue team, challenging your opponent, and you being out of position if the challenge goes well for the blue team, which is where I would suggest being like, uh, I don't know if it's perpendicular or pretty much like, let's say, oops, let's say this is the teammate in the air. You kind of want to be here in a defensive spot that allows you to recover and defend the net. Let's say the boost is the net. It allows you to turn back, save if you need to, or allows you to push forward and get into that open space if it if the ball travels that way. It also allows you to stay in the play, which is really important higher up GC one plus. You always want to be able to make a statement on the play. Good dribble here. I know it's not the most clean, but it gets past one or the one passes it to us. Gets past him again. He's worried about the demo, which is fine. If we take it down the center, if we don't rush it as much, right? If we practice this ground control, right? We can use, we slow down here. I think he's, or the player or whatever, is holding their R2 button, RT button, W key a little too much here. If you slow down here, let it, let the ball control on your car, you should be fine. And then your teammate went for the demo, which is smart, because he probably thought uh, this player here had possession of the ball and could bring it towards the net. We don't need to jump here. Two reasons why. Ball's in the air, yes. But look how much closer the opponent is to the ball. Maybe he doesn't know he has boost. But the opponent is so much closer to the ball that it doesn't matter, right? And your teammate is flipping forward to grab the boost, which leads to an open net, right? And a bump. I'm surprised that the blue team didn't score, honestly. Not bad. More of a panic touch because we're like, oh, we have low boost. Oh, we got to hit the ball away. If you take the ball, if you take control of the ball here, it leads to a lot more threatening of a play than just slamming it, right? It really does. Good bump. Good idea. Didn't get it. That's fine. Need to work on the off the wall mechanics just a little bit. Not too much. But we circle around and get the goal. That is good. Everything here was good. Except for the this initial play here. It's a decent touch, not the best. But we're focusing too much on the on the spin. If we focus on the touch here and drive a little more forward, we can have a angle or a pass if our teammate was in the right spot, right? Good bump here. That's great. Off the post, good read of the play. Boom goal simple play if you read it right <laughs> yet again ball cam off i'm gonna say it for every single time i see it this is fine but by this flip you need to have it on not when you land but by your flip because a you can't change where your flip is going and b you need to know what the play is doing so you know where to position. Two things. We pause our momentum here. This is just a mechanical error and not understanding that. Also cheating up. 
right? Let's look at how threatening this play is, right? It is champ two. This guy's off the back wall using a, a decent amount of boost. You can't see it because it's the, the cheap, uh, pretty much invisible boost or it's the rendered. I don't know what's going on, but we don't see all of it. You know how threatening going to the sidewall is? It's not very threatening. I'll tell you that. So us having to rush up here and challenge isn't necessary. We can play the bounce just like your teammate did. And we can create a play off of that. We don't need to jump and waste 40 boost here. We cycle back around. Good. Go to 50. Good. Unfortunate recovery, but we do grab the boost, which means that cliff here has no boost. Which we should have been ready for if we paid attention to the fact that we knew that cliff was very low, if not on zero. And also backwards. We're too aggressive here, and then we're too passive. Not too aggressive, but we're aggressive enough that it will work. But then we get too passive, we get too scared all of a sudden. If we're watching, we see Stingray. He missed the ball. Teammate can't double this, so we're watching Cliff. We look at Cliff, he's backwards. He's going to panic and try to flip this away. So we should either A, be moving in that direction a little bit before, or we should be waiting on the miss. And, you know, judging as it is champ 2, I'd be banking on the miss. We're not paying attention to the boost path. We could be having another 24. So is that 70? 76? We panic here. This is this is just a panic play. So we're too nonchalant going back. And the reason I'm saying we're too nonchalant is we should be back or challenging, like right away. If we look at like a SSL or a GZ3 or a high level like player and we're like in this exact situation you'll see they're either rotating back trying to create trying to be miserable for the opponent like demoing going for bumps all that sort or we're challenging right away for our teammate we have the read on the play here like it goes up it goes back down right classic isaac newton physics right but we don't prepare for it to go back up we read the up and down but we don't read the going up again then again another panic not i don't know what to label it other than panic but just another unnecessary touch that leads to nothing you know how threatening a touch that can't be followed up on is it's not very threatening this is good good pad awareness this is this is okay right I'm not going to get on him for this one because there's nothing you can do in this situation that doesn't benefit the blue team. This benefits the blue team greatly because we're just out of the play still. If Cliff gets that demo on your teammate, the net's open pretty much. So instead of turning on the wall because the ball's not going to the wall, and we know this for the next, like, two seconds, we can just stay grounded as well. Staying grounded is also really important. And that goes with the wall. So, instead of just going up the wall for no reason, we stay on the ground. This is the this is roughly the positioning that I was talking about earlier with that double tap. Maybe you scooch over a little bit and you're fine, like following the ball. We should be going here because we see that our teammate has no boost. He pops it here. Yes, he can follow it, but... How likely is he going to get a powerful shot on an opponent that has high boost? And yes, you can say that maybe if we check where uh, Cliff was here, right? 70 boost. He's not guarding the net efficiently here. He's guarding the net, but not good. Yes, he could have gotten a save. I'm not saying it's impossible, but if we put a, a strong enough shot on that here, we drive a little bit to the right and we hit it with the left side of our car and we aim for the corner of the car, it should go in, right? This is a touch we don't need to do, right? If we take our time here, we don't jump, it it looks so it looks so yummy going up for that ball, right? But if we stay grounded and we stay put, we have a touch here into a follow-up shot, right? Because Stingray has no boost and he just took your boost. You took your 
200. And it leads to a goal, right? We're giving up possession without needing to. So if we... This is why opponent watching is so important, as well as like looking at the noses of people's cars. If we look here just in this frame, Cliff could go down, right? That is totally possible. And we know that the ball has to come down eventually, right? And it's bouncing towards us. It's bouncing away from... Uh, what's his face? Cliff. This ball is coming to us. We don't need to jump here. All we have to do is watch Cliff and see what he does. Didn't use any boost. Smart on Cliff. But we just jump and make a fool out of ourselves pretty much. Which this is a completely avoidable play. Which is why I'm talking about it, right? That's all right. This is just a lot of nothing, right? This is just, yet again, a lot of watching, right? Now we see where there's first or second men is. I don't know who's going to chow first. But we see where one of them is. This is fine here. It's not the best, but it's fine. It's a good flick over. We should be a little bit more involved. Just, just scoot it up a little bit and a little bit more to the side. That's all I'm saying. Good chow. Or good enough chow. Good. Good pressure. This is good pressure, right? Making life miserable for the opponent. See how threatening this shot is? It's not threatening. We take control of the ball. We do give it up because we're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, zero boost. I definitely can't dribble without on your boost. Which is why we work on dribbling without boost. We try to play a 50, something. An option to our teammate, even. Stuff like that. I like the idea. I like the <laughs> I like the attempt. There's something here, I can feel it, but I just can't name it right now. It's probably fine. This is the double commit section of the replay where we can hear our teammates. We can't see them, right? But we can hear them. If you have, I guess, good enough earbuds, airpods, whatever, headset, and you listen, we can even see our teammate to our right. So we know that our teammates to our right. Probably in a position to collect the ball here. We can hear them on the wall the whole time. We're pretty much on the wall the whole time. This is where we see him. We see him turn. He's ready for the ball here. And then for some reason, you're there, right? It happens, but it's definitely avoidable. And that's why we try to try to avoid the avoidable. So we know our teammate's dead. You know, we're, we know he's back, so we can just do whatever challenge. Head to the corner. Good. This is more stuff that just didn't happen in Cham, didn't happen in Diamond, and ours, or didn't happen in Plat, and didn't happen in Diamond. We're kind of getting to, right, yet again, there's still a little bit of watching the play, not getting as involved in as we could be, but we're getting there, right? We, we have the essence of, we're finally, essentially, we finally figured out how to play the game. We're not efficient at anything yet, but we figured out how to play the game. That's where we're at right now in the ranking system we're at c2 and next video will be c3 mainly because there's a little bit of a di difference between c2 and c3 i've noticed especially higher c3 which we'll, we will hopefully be going over uh if i can find exactly the mmr range that i'm looking for but hopefully you guys learned something here i know i've i've been saying the same thing for the past pretty much uh was it four now uh episodes of this wake up pay attention to the game our ball cam it, like it is so important like the lack of information almost makes me cry like and i'm not saying like he turns off ball cam and should uninstall the game i'm not saying that 
I'm not saying you should be on bulk or bulk M 24/7. It is good time. It is fine good times to take it off, but it better not be when the play is switching or someone's collecting the ball. Like if it's in transition, like that's when you should really have it on. Like let's say Cliff here takes it into the corner. Let's say there's like 10 seconds left or something, unlimited time. Cliff here takes it into the corner and drives it at the wall. If for some reason we have ball cam off, it better be to just tap to see where that boost is. If that boost is there. If that makes sense, right? A little, little demonstration here is let's say that the ball is, uh, say the ball is in the blue corner here. They're transitioning to offense. And someone's there, like, it better be like that. Like, just to see where the b boost is. Because that can lead to, like, very bad plays and probably, like, maybe a double commit. If you want to think about it like that. Because if your teammate's behind you, let's say you're your first man and you just gave up possession for some reason. And your teammate's behind you, they're probably ready for the ball. If it gets sent their way like if it gets sent down the line here and they're like right around here they're probably collecting the ball and taking it up right stuff like that like stuff to pay attention to but yeah i hope you guys did enjoy i hope you guys did learn something and uh i'll see you next time for part two of champ hope you had a good one peace